the way, but at least they stand there to give a sign that eternity has not forgotten about time. And here we are. I was working late at WFUR, Grand Rapids Radio. Years ago, I put myself through college and seminary as a radio announcer. Sometimes people say, oh, you've got a radio voice. I don't know. I never listened to it. I don't know how much you listen to yourself, but anyway. I put myself through college and seminary as a radio announcer, and at 11.33, one late one Friday night, I always worked the Friday nights and weekend shifts, the light flashed that the phone was ringing. We couldn't have the phone sounding over the microphone, so the light uh, was flashing. I picked up the phone. I was watching the rest of the programming, and there was a voice at the other end, kind of distraught, kind of dozy, as this station that plays religious music. And indeed, WFUR was a Christian radio station, so I tried to engage the person. Yes, what are you looking for? I can't find your music. And as we talked, she told me that she had taken a bottle of medications and that she was ending her life and that she wanted to hear our music as she died. What could I do? What could I do? I tried to keep her on the line. I tried to gather information. At most, she would only tell me that her name was Betty. I tried to get some information that I might relay to the police but she was cautious about that. And by the time we had talked for about 25 minutes, I said, I, I'm really sorry. I, I have to give the headlines and the weather at the top of the hour. Stay on the line. I'm not going to hang up, but I'll be right back with you. By the time I came back to the phone, it was dead. I wondered about that. I went back to the apartment I shared with two other guys. The next day, I told them the story. I shook my head. I didn't know what to think. I looked at the newspapers for some sign of something that had happened, but no reports were given. Thursday night, Friday morning, 1.30 in the morning, I'm sound asleep, and my roommates are shaking me awake. There's a phone call. A woman is calling. She's got a number. She doesn't know who she's supposed to be phoning, but that's all she knows. She's got this number written down, and she wants to talk with somebody. And they thought right away, could this be the woman? And I talked with her, and it was indeed the woman. She had survived her attempt at suicide. And over the next several years, I spent time with her. I found out where she lived with her children and the man who was not her husband. I gave her $600 that was truly all the money I had in the world in order to find a way back to some domestic stability. A few years ago, there was a report of a funeral in Grand Rapids. And those who made testimony of her life said she was one of the most kind and generous and devout people they had ever known. And her children praised her for the way that she had guided them in life and in faith. The prayer of a righteous man? I hope so, but it's not about us, is it? It's about the one who has said, no matter what may happen, child, I'll never let go of your hand. And so we come to the end of this letter and we're reminded again that it's not just in the church where we have to learn to get along with one another. But we are called to be ambassadors of Jesus in a world which sometimes struggles with doubt, pain, fear, injustice. 
and we pray and we anoint and we beg and we plead and we cajole because we are leaning into a future that we cannot fashion or form. We are leaning into a future that belongs to God in heaven. As Don Francisco put it powerfully in one of his songs, I know what you've been seeing. I've seen you hide your fears. Embarrassed by your weaknesses, afraid to let me near. I wish you knew how much I long for you to understand no matter what may happen, child. I'll never let go of your hand. I know you've been forsaken by all you've known before. When you failed their expectations, they frowned and closed the door. But even if your heart itself should lose the will to stand, no matter what may happen, child, I'll never let go of your hand. The life that I have given you, no one can take away. I've sealed it with my spirit, blood, and word. The everlasting Father has made his covenant with you, and he's stronger than the world you've seen and heard. So don't you fear to show them all the love I have for you, and I'll be with you everywhere in everything you do. And even if you do it wrong and miss the joy I've planned, no matter what may happen, child, I'll never let go of your hand. Yes. And amen. And pray. And testify. Pray with me. Journey with us, God, that we might be ambassadors of your grace, mercy, and peace. Give us patience for the living of these days and the ability to see the horizons that are glowing with the kingdom of God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will come quickly to restore all things and make all things new, including our own wavering hearts and timid selves. But while you leave us here in these times in between your first and second coming, help us to see with eyes that have compassion, to hear with ears that go beyond just responding to the first cries, and to love with hearts that are beating in time with yours. Give us your grace for the living of these days. And let this neighborhood and this world be a better place because of it. We pray in your name. Amen. Continue the prayers, precious Lord. Take my hand.
please pray with me as we uh, go before the Lord in corporate prayer. Heavenly Father, it is good to be in your house today. Thank you for the opportunity to worship freely in this country. Thank you for Pastor Brower and leading us in worship through this summer, through the book of James. Lord, we pray that you'll continue to bless him and his family. Thank you for a time of rest and renewal for Pastor Simon and his family. We pray that he and his family have been refreshed and ready for continued ministry here at Heritage. Lord, we thank you for a new season in this church, full of activities, small groups, and Bible studies. Lord, for those that will lead those groups, may you equip them with all that they stand in need of to lead those ministries. Lord, we pray a blessing upon our schools. Classes will resume soon. Lord, we pray for safety. We pray for the teachers and the students that you will equip them for teaching and learning. Lord, we pray for and thank you for this congregation. For safety and travel this summer, as many have had time for rest and for seeing the beauty around us. Lord, we pray for those who have experienced hardship and health. We think of Bob Pangle. Lord, we thank you for the tests that he has been able to receive, Lord, that have revealed a, a replacement of an aortic valve, August 29. Lord, we pray for him, for Jane, for their family as they prepare for this, for those that will provide care, the doctors, surgeons. Lord, we pray for Tonga, disappointing news as her family did not receive the visas that they applied for. Lord, we just uh, pray for patience in all of this. We know that even through all of this, you hold that all in your hands as well. Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless this day, continue to bless this congregation as we praise and honor you. Amen. A few announcements. Uh, be sure to grab the Heritage Happenings if you have not yet. Uh, it is located on the back counter in the narthex. It's full of uh, things that are upcoming, uh, celebrations. Uh, we think especially of uh, Bill Truscott, Ian Tuin, Jan Ellings that will all celebrate birthdays today and upcoming this week. And a special uh, Happy anniversary to Gary and Dorothy Brookhuysen. Um, on behalf of the congregation and the council, thank you to Wayne Brower in leading us this summer through the book of James. Uh, it was a blessing to have you here. And uh, we want to make sure that everybody sticks around for a little bit in the, in the fellowship hall as we have uh, refreshments, cake to celebrate that and to say thank you to Wayne and make sure you clear your calendar for five years from now. No excuses. Uh, today our offering is for uh, Forgotten Man Missions and the general fund that will be um, taken as you leave the sanctuary through the doors that will be taken there. Uh, there's a slide for Langland Family Funeral Homes collecting school supplies uh, from now to August 24. Uh, so make sure you uh, have the opportunity to drop those off at their locations. And that is it. Thank you very much. Let's stand together. As you go on your way, know that your God goes with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile on you and give you his peace. And all God's people say, Amen. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, His kingdom cannot fail, he rules o'er earth and hell. The keys of heaven and hell to Christ our Lord are given. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice again, and my sick at God's right hand till all his foes submit bow down at his command and fall beneath his feet lift up your heart lift up your voice but voice again I say Rejoice in glorious hope, for Christ the Judge shall come. To gather all his saints to their eternal home. We soon shall hear the angel's voice, the trump of God shall sound. Rejoice.